number one gives us a clock and for each time given they want us to name the number that the second hand points to so if we are just 15 seconds after one o'clock where would our second hand be pointing to and so each of these little dashes right is one second so this is five ten fifteen seconds so we'd be pointing at the three um 30 seconds after um um after one we would be pointing at six a minute after one so 60 seconds so all the way around we'd be back at 12 and um then five minutes after one okay so then we'd have gone around five full times we'd be back at 12 again number two at 12.15, the end of the minute hand is eight feet above the ground. So 15 minutes after 12. So we're pointing at this three. Let me get an arrow here. So we'd be pointing at um, the three and that's eight feet above the ground. Then at 12.30, it's six and a half feet off the ground. So now um, if we're at 1230, then we'd be the end of it's at um, six and a half feet off the ground. So let me get these written on here. So here we're at eight feet. And then here at this bottom part here, we are at 6.5 feet. So first question that they ask is how long is the um, minute hand? Well, if here it's eight feet off the ground and here it's six and a half, the difference between these would be how long it is. So eight minus six and a half gives us 1.5 feet for the length of that minute hand. And then how high is the clock above the ground? Um, and so we can just kind of name that based on this middle point. So let's just say the center of the clock is eight feet off the ground. Because the minute hand goes almost all the way out to the edge of the clock, um, but not fully. So we could kind of say that the bottom edge of the clock is six and a half feet off the ground. We could add a foot and a half here and say it's about nine and a half feet high. Um, but again, this, the hands don't go all the way out to the edge of the clock. So we're safer to just say how high the center of the clock is. And that's equal to um, where this minute hand was pointing at 15 after the hour. All right. Number three gives us a point on a circle centered at zero, zero. Which equation defines the circle? So remember that a circle equation, equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. Remember that um, h and k are the center. So the x coordinate of the center, the y coordinate of the center, and the center here, remember, is 0, 0. So these are going to be 0 then we need to determine the radius and we know this point here so the radius is going to be the length of this segment connecting the center to that point and we can figure that out by doing the distance formula or by doing pythagorean theorem because we know this x value here is six and this y value here is eight a horizontal and a vertical make a right angle so this um, radius squared is going to equal 6 squared plus 8 squared. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. So we have r squared is equal to 100. So the radius is 10. And so then 10 would go in here. 10 squared is 100. So we would have x squared because x minus 0 is just x squared y minus 0 squared is just y squared equals 100. So letter C would be our answer there. Number four, four the 0.34 is on a circle centered at 0, 0. Which of these points lie on the circle? Select all that apply. So I'm just going to write out a circle equation again for this. So remember x minus h squared 
plus y minus k squared will equal our radius squared. And so our center is zero, zero. So it's just gonna be x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. And we can find the radius by doing the Pythagorean theorem here, right, from um, zero, zero to three, four. So if you think of this as zero, zero, and this as three, four, this length is three, this is four. We can find the radius by doing the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so r squared is equal to three squared, which is nine, four squared, which is 16. Those add together to 25. So square root that, our radius is five. So in here will be the radius five squared, which is 25. So anything on this circle will fit into this equation x squared plus y squared will equal 25. So let's go ahead and do this. So x squared plus y squared should equal 25. So negative three squared is nine, negative four squared is 16, that equals 25, so this is on our circle. Again, in part B, four squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 16 again is 25. In part C, 0 squared, right? We're just going to square each of these. 0 squared is 0, 5 squared is 25, 0 plus 25 is 25. So this is on our circle. 0, 0 is the center, so that's not going to be on the circle. That's in the middle of the circle. Also, 0 plus 0 does not equal 25. Part E, negative 5 squared is 25, 0 squared is 0, 25 plus 0 is 25, so this is on our circle as well. Number 5, match each polynomial with its end behavior as x gets larger and larger in the positive and negative directions. So note, some answer choices won't be used. So in part A, um, and when we're kind of looking at this, remember that, um, so let me just write this out, x to the m over x to the n. If m is less than n, so the top degree is lower than the bottom degree, automatically you have a y equals zero end behavior. If the degrees are the same, then you divide these leading coefficients. So you get y equals a divided by b. If the top degree is larger than the bottom, then you need to do long division to get your slant asymptote. So those are kind of the three situations. So here our degree on top is zero because we don't have an x term over x to the first. So the degree on bottom is bigger. So automatically this one's n behavior is y equals zero. That's number three. Part B we have degree one on top, degree one on bottom. So now we divide the lead coefficients. So three divided by one, so y equals three is the end behavior asymptote here. That's number two. Part C, so we have, again, a degree one on top, a degree one on bottom. So we're gonna divide these lead coefficients again, which is again, three over one. So this is going to have an end behavior asymptote of y equals 3 as well. Part D, now we have an x squared over an x to the first. So we're going to have to do long division here to figure out um, what the asymptote is. Now, because we've got multiple choice, if we just think about what 3x squared divided by x is, 3x squared divided by x is, whoops, is 3x, right? Because 3 divided by 1 is 3x squared divided by x is 3x. So if we look at these, we know this n behavior is going to have to have something with a 3x. So if we look, this says x squared, this says 3x squared, here's a 3x, okay? So number 6 is the only viable option here. Now if we needed to figure out the whole thing, we would have to actually do long division here. And so I'll just show you that in case you actually need to come up with the um, end behavior asymptote on your own. So you would put the x minus six here. We have three x squared. So three x times x gives us three x squared. Three x times negative six is 18, negative 18 x. 
So then this plus this has to be negative 16. So this has to be 2x for those to add to negative 16. So then x times 2 gives us 2x. And once we get down to our constant, this is just our end behavior asymptote. So that 3x plus 2. Then the final one, um, we have a degree 3 on top because we have an x cubed, okay, over an x. Now, long division is what we're going to have to do, right, since this is an x cubed over an x. Um, again, there's only a couple of choices here, um, x squareds, because we have a cubed over an x, so we know it's going to be an x squared. So we're down to option number four or five. Um, these actually are easily divisible the way they are like this because we see a common factor here of x minus 6. So we can just cancel those out. So then our x plus 5 times x minus 4 is going to be our end behavior asymptote. So if we were to multiply this out, our front term, our leading term is just going to be x squared. So that's going to have to be number 4 because we don't have a 3 in here to get 3x squared. Um, and if you wanted to multiply this out, then you'd have negative 4x, you'd have plus 5x, and we'd have a minus 20. So that's where you get the x squared plus 1x minus 20 um, that you see in number 4. Number 6, find all solutions to each equation. So we see that these are all quadratics. So we're going to have options to factor to use square roots or to do the quadratic formula. So for this one, there are factors of positive eight that add to negative six. That's negative four and negative two. So we'll be able to factor this since our a value is one. So if we multiplied this back out, it would give us back this x squared, negative two x and negative four x. And then negative two times negative four would give us the eight. So now we can set these each equal to zero and solve. So add four to both sides, add two to both sides, and we get um, x equals four and x equals two. Next one, factors of positive nine that add to negative six. So that's going to be negative three times negative three. So I can actually write this one as x minus three squared if I wanted to. You can certainly also just write it as x minus 3 times x minus 3 if you want to. Um, I'm just going to write it like this so I can show you now you could do the square root. So you could just square root both sides. And the square root of x minus 3 squared is just going to be x minus 3. Square root of 0 is just 0. So then you would add 3 to both sides and we'd get a solution of x equals 3. Part C. Um, there are no factors of 10 that add to negative 6 because for 10, it's 10 and 1 and then 2 and 5. So we could get 11 or negative 11. We could get 7 or negative 7. Neither of those are negative 6. So this one, we're going to have to use quadratic formula. And remember, quadratic formula is the opposite of B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So the um, B term is negative 6, so the opposite of that is 6 plus or minus B squared, so negative 6 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 1, and then C, which is 10, all divided by 2 times A, so 2 times 1. Um, so x equals 6 plus or minus, now this inside part right here, right, negative 6 squared is 36, um, and then negative 4 times 10 is negative 40. So we end up with um, the square root of negative 4, 36 minus 40 is negative 4, and then this is all over 2. The square root of negative 4, right, the square root of 4 is 2 and we have the square root of negative 1. So square root of 4 is 2, square root of negative 1 is i, and then we have that all over 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 2i two divided by 2 is just i, so we end up with 3 plus or minus i for the solution for that one. 